Hello everybody and good morning. Well, good evening for you, actually morning for me. And welcome to the Southern Cross Dota launch party. I'm just, hopefully you're just excited, as excited as I am to be casting this for you right now. I'm going to be your host for the evening. Barry and with me for the first game only, and then after that it will be Lily. First game is Grant. How are you feeling this morning? Well, evening, my friend. Oh, you know, very well rested. Excited. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, interesting to see what they're going to have on display for us for the launch party. I don't know about you, but it's been a fair while since I've casted um, some captains mode games, so I'm I'm pretty keen to get into it. Oh yeah, me exactly. I mean, last night I had a little bit of casting to do myself, but right now this is what I'm this is what I'm here for, and they're definitely going to be pumped for this one. Jumping into it right away, our first teams are going to be Easy Life and Syf Gaming. Both of these teams are very prominent in the Australian scene. Me and myself, I don't know all that much about them because I don't really know Southeast Asian Dota all that much aside from some of the Natalic stuff I had done a few weeks ago. But either way, jumping right into this, Shadow Demon and Lifestealer are the first two bands coming out from Easy Life. Not really all that surprising. Lifestealer is kind of the quintessential band when it comes to, you know, thinking of what carry do I not want to have to deal with. Because Lifestealer recently, he's just been absolutely annoying in terms of all of his potential. Absolutely. Um, I... I have been seeing a little bit less of him in uh, aggressive tri lane, say, since his uh, open his uh, open wounds range nerf has come about, but he's still extremely potent to have in lane with that 70% slow in the magic community. Um, the round one Treant Protector ban. Look, all right, that's awesome. If you would have told me six months ago that Treant Protector would be a round one ban in a competitive match, I would have laughed at you. Well, I think that was definitely Goblack. Goblack brought that to the front. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, a first pick Darkseer, that's kind of interesting. No, recently it's become quite popular. I mean, Darkseer has resurfaced as kind of this really, really popular offlaner because of really just how strong he is. He's undeniable when it comes to putting in, to winning your offlane. I mean, there are very few heroes that can do very well up against Darkseer, especially, you know, if you're going to decide to run a defensive tri lane, you really risk it. Picking a melee carry, dealing with Ion Shell as a melee carry is going to be a pain, and you just, you, most of the time you just don't want to do it, which is why SYF Gaming here probably decided to go with the Gyrocopter, which always tends to be the very safe choice up against something like a Dark Sir. He puts out a lot of right click damage, although his range did receive, I think it was an 80 range nerf for his auto attack. Auto attack range as well. Mention that actually, I don't think that it brings him within range for Ion Shell right at the end of it, but it gives him it gives him that 80 range less impunity to sit there and hit the Ion Shell creep. So that is definitely something to bear in mind. Um, and the Rubik pick up as well. You can't like you can't really go wrong with Rubik. Um, it, just even with the Darkseer here, clearly uh, Darkseer has a lot of very enviable spells to steal. Oh, exactly. I mean, if it wasn't going to be the Rubik, I bet you it would have been the Shadow Demon. I bet you SYF would have gone with something like the Shadow Demon if it wasn't banned out. Because Shadow Demon just pairs so well with almost any hero you can think of. Rubik as well. They're just... They're so, there's so much utility in those heroes. It's just if you can't think of a support to pick, it's going to be the support you're going to pick. And Easy Life decided to go their second pick. It's going to be the Nyx Assassin. This is a hero... I'm always a little bit on the fence about in terms of potential. I mean, he's always going to be solid. The stun is always going to be useful. But you pick him up mainly, you're going to be picking him up for the stun and as well as for the Vendetta. The Vendetta's capability at picking off supports is in moving into the mid, a little bit into the late game is almost unparalleled. But he does require the level 6 though. So you really have to have faith in the tri lane that you're putting him in, that you're going to find the kills and that he'll find his levels. Because if he's not able to get six quick enough, the stun is nice, but it's really only going to go so far. Exactly. Um, I've, I've noticed that people aren't quite as keen to run Nyx solo mid as before, uh, especially since things like Magnus aren't appearing mid quite as often with the uh, with the advent of the bottle nerf. But I, I really do... I, I really do want to point out, Spiked Carapace has got to be one of the best spells in the game. Um, for Nyx to be such a good single target, uh, s single target assassin hero, and to come with that ability that'll just absolutely disjoint a team fight is he's definitely, definitely a good utility hero to have, and he does perform quite adequately in a tri lane. Like you're saying, that stun is quite nice. Visage being the third ban here for Easy Life, not that that's surprising. Visage has really shown himself as being one of the strongest heroes you can put in a tri lane. Soul Assumption does an 
unbelievable amount of damage in the early game, especially with something like Rubick as well. Rubick does a it's pretty much a second um, a second grave chill with telekinesis, and the amount of slow that would come out is just very impressive. Absolutely, um, and a spec like the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, especially with something like a gyrocopter as well. Like the amount of uh, the amount of hero damage that that um, would be available in a tri lane like that. They, it's it's I would say it's wise of them to uh, to get Visage out of the way. Uh, Latrax presumably going to be running the tri lane with Rubik. That telekinesis always sets up the split earth beautifully. No, exactly. And Weaver being the third pick here from Easy Life. Not all that surprising. Weaver is the easy life. Oh! Weaver is the easy yes. life offlaner here, but Bloodseeker is going to be the fourth pickup here from SYF Gaming. Picks like this are always interesting. I mean, I'm in terms excited. of whether whether or not the team actually came up with a strategy for the Bloodseeker, or they're just picking it up to pick it up. It's always interesting to see what people are going to do with it. But honestly, it has a lot of validity for both of the invisible heroes. Definitely, definitely. I was actually reading about an interesting interaction between Bloodseeker and Weaver today. Um, if Weaver uses time lapse, it doesn't dispel rupture. And more than that, if Weaver travels less than the 1300 leash distance with the time lapse, he will take full damage from the rupture for the da for, for the distance that he travels. So um, that's actually quite a superb way to, to sort of uh, shut down Weaver and prevent him from running around. See, but the issue I find with a hero like Bloodseeker is the same issue I find with a hero like Spiritbreaker. He's strong. Spiritbreaker is undeniably very strong after 6.78. But the problem is the chore that comes with it that is laning him. You have to put him somewhere, and you have to put him somewhere useful. You have to find him the farm. Bloodseeker, sure, Rupture is nice. But as soon as you hit maybe that 30 minute mark and you're going to have a hero like Chen especially now, Chen is a great counter pick with the Hand of God, it's going to get really hard for Bloodseeker to do a lot of damage into the mid and late game here. And he's going to need to have farm, so where they're going to be laning him, I'm not too sure. They could be laning him as an off laner, that's a possibility. They could decide to put him in the jungle and run a bot, run a safe lane dual lane. It's some possibility as well, but I think we're probably going to see him in the offlane, and I don't know if he'll be doing all that well, depending on what Easy Life decide to go with as their third. Because as it stands right now, it's going to be the next assassin, whatever carry they decide to go with, and then Chen probably supporting in the jungle, which really brings a lot of possibility. Unfortunately, Bloodseeker doesn't have much of an escape. The only escape he's going to have is going to be the silence, and you, you know, Jen, Chen comes out of the jungle with two centaurs, there isn't really silencing that kind of stuff. Exactly. He, um, he's, he's, he's by no means a top tier hero, situational at best, but I, I just, I love it. I love seeing games where shit like Bloodseeker does get picked. Fifth ban from SYF is going to be the Juggernaut. Not a lot of surprising. I mean, SYF has gone out of their way to ban out a lot of these farming carries at this point. I mean, the Nature's Prophet, Alchemist, and now the Juggernaut. I mean, they really don't want to be pushed against quite easily as uh, Easy Life has picked up the Chen, which is going to allow them to, if they want, push down the top tip, the top, uh, the top tower quite quickly with the Chen creeps. So Chen is definitely a better pusher than something like the Enchantress. Interesting what SYF is going to go with is their fifth pick here. They could run the Bloodseeker myth. I feel like that's something we might have discounted. Bloodseeker myth is a possibility against Easy Life, who have not picked up a mid yet. Interesting to note is that neither team has actually banned out any of the strong mids. And OD is going to be the mid pickup from SYF Gaming, which is really not that surprising. OD, yeah. very, very... Speaking of strong mids, holy shit. Alright, how are Easy Life... What, what are Easy Life going to run against OD in mid? How do you beat OD in the mid lane? I mean, I think the best you can do, I mean, if you think about it, if you put a Nyx Assassin up against an Outworld Destroyer, the only way Outworld Destroyer can... Okay, yes. The only way Outworld Destroyer can reliably beat Nyx Assassin is to actually not play the game. Because by casting his abilities, he gets the mana. The Nyx can just burn the mana. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of an all-around trade here. But I'm just a little curious as to how or where this one is going to go here. I mean, both teams have quite a bit of options as to what their lanes are going to be. But if I had to make predictions, I'm going to say that they're going to see the Nyx Assassin with the Konka in a trial. Or not yet. Actually, 
Huh, no, this is a little tough here with the two offlane, the two potential offlaners with Weaver and Darkseer. We might see the Darkseer moving towards the mid lane. That could be a possibility as well. Iron Shell could do a good job of forcing out the Outworld Destroyer, especially with something like the Soul Ring funding the Iron Shell, not really having to worry about the Astral Imprisonment all that much. But um, uh, SYF, their stuff is pretty straightforward though. I, I don't know, I'm thinking we could see a Kunkka in the mid lane, because with the uh, Tidebringer, he doesn't really worry about having all of his mana stolen, so uh, th that's another possibility. Uh, we've got SYF moving up in along the top lane here, uh, hoping to uh, hoping to uh, find an engagement in the enemy forest here. Already? Well, as I predicted, Kunkka, well not really as I predicted, just... <laughs> Either way, T Duck is gonna be moving down towards our off lane right now. Gonna be playing on our darks here over in the mid lane. Yeah, buddy is gonna be over on our Kunkka. Chen will be handled by Lonsdale over in the top lane with what is gonna be our dual lane supported by Chen. Z Muffin Man is gonna be on our Weaver. And the top lane is gonna be the bug lane. Bring some raid, cause TLM is playing on that Nyx Assassin. <laughs> Meanwhile, over on SYF, we're going to have Sile Voss playing on the Outworld Destroyer. Rubik going to be handled by uh, Fresh. The uh, Bloodseeker being played by 2-0. Gyrocopter handled by Monk. And Boomer going to be played by the Lashrak. And we've got a blocking ward going down already. And a giant middle finger erected in Chen's general direction. I mean, they're really going to want to prevent Chen from really assisting in this tri lane here. Because, I mean, if they're going to decide to put the Bloodseeker in the off lane. He's going to have a really sour time trying to go up against something like this. But it would seem that SYF have decided to go with an aggressive trialing, which is not a bad idea. With the Bloodseeker going up against somebody like the Darkseer, it can go quite well. He can heal over that Ion Shell damage very quickly, very efficiently, very reliably, and it's going to give Darkseer a really bad time with the constant silences. But already, Lonsdale rotating into the, into the Radiant oh, Jungle... Yep, T Duck already cutting off that uh, already cutting off that lane, grabbing grabbing a bit of farm there. The only issue I see with this, unfortunately, is two zero is still going to be able to get health from these creeps, so he's going to have a re de reliably hold off the creeps from the tower. But interestingly enough, Lonsdale has already rotated into the Radiant Jungle, really just ignoring the entire top lane right now. That could be a problem here for yeah, Zim Oven Man and TLM. And... Trial in there, I'm not sure about Lonsdale's decision. It'll be interesting to see how that one pans out. And I mean, like, cutting the lane as Darkseer, yeah, it's tried and true, but against someone like Bloodseeker, like, he is a melee hero. He's going to be able to regenerate health from the last hits, but I feel like the Iron Shell could probably be leveraged uh, in lane. Um... So, in terms of this top lane here, I think it's really about how easy life we're going to be playing it here. If TLM gives up the first blood or Z Muffin Man, I think they're going to be in a world of hurt in terms of catching back up to this aggressive trial, especially if you give the Leshrac levels, especially if you give Fresh some levels. But if they're able to pick up a kill, which is entirely possible on these very, very squishy supports, they could have them have on their hands a very easy lane because frankly, Weaver does fantastic by himself and he'll do even better with, an, uh, with a stun paired with him. Absolutely. Weaver can output a frightening amount of damage with a few levels behind him just through the Shikuchi and the Geminate attack. Um, it's definitely not something to underestimate, and I, I've got to agree with you. It's it's going to be a matter of uh, of who puts themselves out of position first. Boomer running in and cancelling that pull of the uh, pull of the neutrals there. Very very nice indeed. Darks here finding himself in an awkward situation here. This this. Um... A centaur warlord here has the iron shell. He might go down to the first blood. He's stuck behind the creeps, and Lonsdale is going to pick up first blood here on the Bloodseeker. Now, a lot of surprising. Well played by Lonsdale using the centaur, and apparently the dire creeps are conspiring to kill Bloodseeker as well, trapping him inside Jeez. that dire jungle, inside the radiant, uh, radiant force there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane. Putting the iron shell on a Chen creep, that is just diabolical. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be scary. Bloodseeker's not going to be able to bring it down fast enough, nor is he going to be able to claim enough health bringing it down quick enough. But over in the mid lane, Silvos doing an okay job yeah. up against EA Buddy. Uh, He's putting out quite a bit of harass damage. Like completely unable to cast Torrent. I mean, unfortunately, Saivos, yeah, he's winning the lane right now, but a moment ago he wasn't because he was using the Astral Imprisonment on Kunkka too often and taking a lot of the Tidebringer damage. Now he's opted to use it once in a while on Kunkka, once in a while on himself, which is definitely the better choice. 
to dodge some of the Tidebringer damage, because if he's taking too much here, he's going to be forced out. I mean, OD is always going to be one of the squishy heroes, but unfortunately, yeah, Buddy has already used up all of his regen, and it's going to be very hard for him to recover this situation here. Getting too close, he could go down, but once oh, again... Yes. With Leshrac rotating down towards the bottom lane here, it's not going to be enough, and Darkseer is going to pick up another kill on Bloodseeker. 2-0 is the bottom lane right now. That is absolutely disastrous. Bloodseeker just not finding what he needs. Bottom tower seen better days. Lonsdale just being completely unopposed in the, uh, in the Radiant jungle here. I mean, they SYF. really don't have much to come and stop. SYF not, uh, not rotating away from the top lane because they don't want to lose that either. So it, it becomes a question of resources, really. Where can you spare heroes? And we got uh, Silvos Sy getting caught out a little bit here. Not enough mana. Yeah, Back inside the trees. Quite a nice torrent. And that big old Tidebringer is going to do it. One kill going the way for uh, Kunko. It's probably going to make this mid lane a lot easier. I'm really impressed by the versatility that Lonsdale is showing here. I mean... Finding two kills down in the bottom lane as well as assisting in the kill in the mid lane is really, really making this Chen decision very strong as well as rubbing it in SYF's face saying, we picked the Chen, we're pulling it off, what are you doing about it? And honestly, as you said, there's not much they can. I mean, they've already rotated the Leshrock down to the bottom lane to help the Bloodseeker, which is going to make it even easier for Z Muffin Man and TLM to find a kill on, especially somebody like TT Fresh. And it's going to get very difficult. For SYF in these next five minutes, I think it, this next five minutes is going to be one of the deciding factors. Whether or not SYF can actually adapt to the situation they've been given. Absolutely. And, oh dear, Lonsdale is up in the top lane. Monk gets Shikuchi and Pale goes out. We've got a Telekinesis on the way, though I think Monk is still going to go down. But Lonsdale is going to drop to a big old right click from Rubik there. So one for one, but... Definitely the choice is going to go to TT Fresh. It might go down as well here. Weaver going for the dive. One more Shikuchi hit, and that's going to be his death right now. Unfortunately, Zimothan Man doesn't have Shikuchi. Not going to bring him down. He's able to pop the healing cell. Just fast enough, Chen. Oh, T Monk coming in for a little bit of revenge here, trying to find Sea Muffin Man next to the shop. Not going to be able to find him though, unfortunately, and he is going to escape. Two for one is going to be the trade off here in this top lane, and honestly, I don't think that one kill was really worth it. I mean, you traded the Gyrocopter and the Rubik for only one kill. The yeah, two for one just makes it not worth it, anyways. Really, who, no, uh, exactly. He's 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 built up his ring of Basilius. He's built his boots of speed. He's spent his unreliable gold. So. Yeah, re really, you're just giving him a short trip back to the fountain to get back into the newts there. Exactly, he's just looking to get my, you know, my mana back. It doesn't really matter. I gave a kill. It's not a big deal. I mean, killing somebody like the Gyro is going to hold him back quite far. Looking over towards our last hit and denies Gyro is sitting 27 for 8, which is not, which which is a favorable, favorable outcome right now. He does have a mild amount of farm as well as Outworld Destroyer and Bloodseeker. Although Bloodseeker does have two deaths under his belt, it's going to make it kind of not really you know it's 20 is not really an accurate description of how much gold he has considering he's died twice as well as being forced back to the fountain already at six minutes only being level five a lot they're missing a lot of the potential that bloodseeker brings. i mean he's a fantastic ganker he's fantastic roamer and unfortunately he's not been able to do that people have had to help him survive in his lane rather than helping others in their other lane oh, oh dear he's um he, he's he's been relegated to holding the wards for Boomer. That's well, oh, that is just the ultimate. That's just rubbing it at his face right there. I mean, the favorable positioning here we would be looking for from Bloodseeker is rotating up towards the top lane here and probably finding a kill on this next assassin, or on this Weaver to make it a lot easier for Rubik and Gyrocopter to safely farm in. I mean, right now it's quite dangerous, especially for TT Fresh. Sure, he can throw out the telekinesis, but at this point in the game, those Ursa Warriors or those Centaurs, you're looking at almost the strength of another hero. I mean, he's, he's going to have too many options to pick from when it comes to telekinesis, and he's going to have to take damage from somewhere. And I mean, we saw what happens when Gyro decides to man up and try and fight. I mean, he so dies. He's getting a silence put on him down in the bottom lane, running away from Boomer, trying to line up a Split Earth. We're seeing some animation cancels here. Ah, oh, Split Earth just misses. T Duck surges up, might find himself out of this out of this bad situation here. Meanwhile, I will destroy having a dance up in this top lane here. Three heroes coming in to put a kill on him. Nick stun goes out and he is gonna go down. Chen finding another kill here over in the mid lane. Good rotation from Nick's assassin was gonna secure that quite easily. Although Darks here is finished off here, but Lonsdale moving down here in the top bottom lane to cut off 2-0. Unfortunately, two heroes are gonna be caught out here. TLM does have enough mana for another stun. Another stun goes out. Lonsdale finds a second kill within 30 seconds. 
just fantastic play here from Lonsdale. Already starting to deward the Radiant Ward here that's out in the bottom lane. It's going to really restrict, even more restrict SYF's safe movement at this point. Because honestly, they really don't have any right now. I mean, Lonsdale is all over the map as well as Nyx Assassin has decided to do it as well. Which is one of the perks of laning your Nyx Assassin with somebody like a Weaver. That Weaver isn't going to need a babysitter. You know, you can leave the Weaver in Rome with very little consequences that Weaver is going to pay if he's good enough to keep himself alive, which in this case he definitely is. I mean, it's the same situation, you know, if you try lane somebody like the Lone Druid. He has a lot of potential in a tri lane, but he also has potential by himself, which gives you, which gives you a lot of space to work with what you want. Pings go out here on Lonsdale. Probably going to try and find a kill here. Four heroes rotating in. Split Earth goes down on Lonsdale. Unfortunately, he might be able to escape here. The silence goes out. He's taking quite a bit of damage. One more right click from our World Destroyer is going to bring him down. Unfortunately, T Doc. Surging through the rupture. Doesn't give a fuck. Got the rupture thrown on him. Put the search on. Just jog it out. And it looks like T Duck is going to get away there. Uh, and uh, Monk on the gyrocopter died up in the top lane there that I magnificently missed. Oh yeah, I mean, it's not really all that surprising. I mean, TLM is now level 7. Vendetta is on cooldown. We can all guess what happened on that one. I mean, <laughs> not all that surprising that he probably went up to the top lane, found the Nyx Assassin hiding in his backyard there. And T Monk once again getting initiated oh, on here. Vendetta. Goodness. Vendetta is on cooldown, but it's not even going to matter. The Impale is going to be far more than enough with the damage coming out of Z-Muffin to bring him down. And... Two deaths, or three deaths now. Two of them, there is just a frightening amount of burst damage there. Looking and over like, to our last hits and our best, excuse me, golden experience graphs here. I mean, 3,000 is going the way of easy life, and it is getting, looks to be getting a lot worse for SYF right now. I mean, it's, it's, the hill is getting really steep, and unfortunately, I mean, with this bottom tower down as well, 2-0 is not going to have very much free farming space. And as we discussed during the draft phase, the Bloodseeker pick is nice. It's surprising, but if you're not going to be able to do much with it, or if you're shut down as... Easy Life has shut him down here. It's going to be very difficult. Initiation goes out here on T-Duck. He has to unfortunately run through the Rapture. OD ult is dropped and he's going to go down. Last with the uh, right click right after the Sanity's Eclipse that time. Over his top lane, Z Muffin Man just casually farming and farming up by himself. It's not really necessary that anyone comes and helps him, but Lonsdale rotates up here as well. They're probably going to be looking to knock down this tier 1 tower. Oh, uh, not all that surprising. I mean, casual Chen creeps there. You know, I don't think there's going to be much they're able to do about it here. I mean, Rubik is level 6. He has the potential to steal maybe something like the Impale. Or possibly the Hand of God if he was able to see that. I'm sure he was able to see that. Meanwhile, the main Kunkka is brought down by Buma and T and Silvos, who are able to find that kill there. Probably with something Split Earth after the Astronaut Prism. Either way, push comes in here on this top lane. Call down. Call down. Call down coming down to push out. PLM. To push out us, why uh, to push out Easy Life right now? I mean, they're forced out for now, but it's really not going to stop them. I mean, Chen wrote instead of realizing that Gyro is going to be able to hold him back, he rotates seamlessly over to this mid lane and brings that down in less than a minute here. And so, Vols as well might find himself in a bad situation. Surges up the smoke to rotate over to mid, and you just you don't often see the smoke being used to rotate to a tower. Out will destroy, getting a very nice uh, astral off on himself to dodge that stun and a rupture going out on Lonsdale. This might go absolutely south, but Chen, in his last act of brilliance, sends back the Darkseer, you know, just, I'll go down, but it's fine, you won't go down, because I got you. Sends back the Darkseer just to be able to survive here, and that went south quite quickly. Good rotation from Bloodseeker coming in, finding that kill, but unfortunately, by finding this kill on Chen, they are going to be losing their, their top tier 1 tower, which is going to give... Easy Life, quite a bit of money now. I mean, Gold Graph agrees with me as well. 5,000 is still going the way of Easy Life, as well as Experience. Although, the Experience Graph is starting to climb back in SYF's favor with those two kills, with that one kill we just saw. Smoke coming if in. You, if you look at the net worth, like T-Duck leading the way in net worth, which isn't all that surprising for a Darkseer. You know, followed by Zed Muffin Man, followed by Yeah Buddy, like... Um, S Silvos on the Outworld Destroyer is the only one break is the only one from SYF breaking into the top five in terms of net worth. So they're facing an uphill battle here. We've got an Astral Imprisonment going out on Kunka, the Diabolic Addict, and the Split Earth hits perfectly. They managed to steal the Torrent, which is going to be pretty good on Rubik with the Telekinesis. Actually, T Duck wondering a little bit close, deciding, th th thinking better of that one.
Yeah, I just decided, no, maybe I don't want to stick around for that one. I mean, Konko, you can die by yourself. I'm okay. I'll take not dying. That, that'll be my choice. So, I mean, he gets out as fast as possible there. Unfortunately... You know what? I think you got this one. He's like, oh, bro, don't worry. Don't worry. I mean, I'll, I'll remember you. And when you come back up in seven seconds, I'll think about you. But 13-minute hand of minus is going to be the choice here from Bloodseeker. And with this bad start of the game, I, I don't know what... I mean, I'm not criticizing it, but I'm criticizing it. I mean, it's it's not a bad choice, especially against somebody like Chen. It's going to make it a lot easier just to steal his creeps here. But oh dear, already Boomer going to get caught between a rock and a hard place here. Oh, vacuum into the torrent. He's going to go down no matter what here. I mean, he was going down regardless, and already the D Warden comes back up. And I think Easy Life is probably going to be looking towards doing this Roshan right now. Lonsdale moves into the pit with his two heavy creeps. As well as TLM and T-Duck, they do have the Ice Armor from the Ogre Troll they might be able to be using shortly on any of the heroes that decide they want to be tanking here. And Unfortunately, SYF is not going to be able to contest this very much. I mean, they're pretty much 4 versus 5 with 2 zeros. Only, only contribution to these fights being the Rupture and possible silence on somebody like Chen if he's able to hit it before the Hand of God comes out. Either way... Yeah, buddy. Might find himself in a bad position here. Gets hit by the call down. He pops his face boots. With the haste, he's going to be able to escape this bad situation here. Counter, counter smoke coming out from SYF. I don't think that I don't think that Easy Life have noticed. They are going to be rotating down towards here to maybe contest this Roshan. Oh dear. D Monk doesn't have ward, though. Monk doesn't have call down. He's not going to be able to throw down much. The torrent does hit four heroes. OD alt hits three heroes. Yeah, buddy might be going down. The dark seer wall comes out as well. Magnificent play here. Just absolute chaos. Double kill for TLM as well. Leshrock just trying to find his way out. Boomer goes down as well. Chen is forced to buy back, and Monk is the only one left alive, and he is going to go down as well. Four deaths go the way of SYF just looking to stop that Roshan and they weren't even able to prevent it or pop the Aegis. That was um, that was pretty brutal with uh, Fresh even making the choice to buy back immediately after. It was, it was too late by the time that he would have gotten there. Everyone was dead already, so... At well, Destroyer are uh, deciding to grab a Hand of Midas himself at 15 minutes 38, which is kind of questionable, I would say. Well, obviously, SYF want to take this into the late game. I mean, they really they want to drag this out as long as possible and get the max amount of farm here. TLM might find himself in a bad situation. Spike Carapace stunning out two heroes. Turns around and picks up the quick kill on Rubik with that mana burn in the Impale. OD says, I don't want you. I'm just going to banish you and move on. Looking for a kill on TLM here. Silence goes out. One more right click is going to bring him down here. But is he going to be able to find it? As soon as the silence ends, TLM has enough mana. Goes into Vendetta, but not going to matter. He's going to take the damage. Sentry Ward on the high ground has paid for itself. Entry wards, I mean, they're always going to end up paying for themselves here, but unfortunately, you're going to have these two heroes, Silvos as well as 2 0, are going to be fighting for heavy creeps in this jungle for their hand of Midas, which is kind of awkward. I mean, 2 0, I mean, Bloodseeker's an okay hero to build a hand of Midas on, but I, I would agree that it's probably a better choice to build it on uh, Bloodseeker than OD. I would never build a hand of Midas on Outworld Destroyer. Especially at this late point in the game, Hand of Midas is always an item you're going to be looking to pick up around the, before the 10 minute mark. I mean, naturally, sometimes in um, very high level games, we see it at around the 5 minute mark in a hero, excuse me, in a hero like something like a Faceless Void in a tri lane, or once in a while it's seen on an anti-mage. I mean, it's kind of a rare, but this is a possibility here. With Bloodseer picking up the Buckler, probably going to be an indication that he is going to be carrying the mech. Although it's surprising, he is a good candidate for such an item. But in, in the same time, it, it's... As agility carries go, Bloodseeker actually has quite enviable stat gain, getting two points in strength per level, and, you know, 1.7 int, which is nice for when he wants to cast spells, I suppose. But three agility and two strength per level is actually pretty good as far as stat gain goes, and that, uh, that Buckler and the mech is just going to give him bags and bags of effective HP, which is hopefully going to gonna allow him to wade into team fights a little bit more effectively. Looking towards our net worth right now, Z Muffin Man is leading the pack as well, followed by Darkseer. Z Muffin Man is quite a distance ahead of everybody else here, sitting at 6,681, 200 gold, and he will have his BKB, which is going to make quite a big difference here in these team fights. He's not going to be taking any more damage from from uh, Gyrocop, any of Gyrocopter's abilities. Although, I think Rupture goes through BKB now, as it is HP removal rather than magical damage. So he's not going to be able to find Salvation in his BKB for that, but either 
over in the jungle, Lonsdale, continuing to absolutely just flat out steal everything from SYF right now, making it incredibly pot, incredibly difficult for either of these Hand of Midas heroes to find heavy creeps to get the in increased amount of experience from here. He really is being a bit of a thought in their side. It's just like, oh, hey, SYF, did you, did you want these centaurs? I'm sorry, those are mine. We got a big push coming along here with three Chen creeps. Uh, Darkseer, you know, Chen himself and the Nyx. Along with the Siege Creep, they're going to rack up some heavy damage on this tower. Nyx Assassin just absolutely funded with these wards here. Drops down the sentry right away. Not going to risk any of the invis heroes from SYF, which don't appear to be any. Although, I mean, Rubik has the potential of stealing both of the invis. And he, in fact, does have Shikuchi at the moment. So. <laughs> I mean, the sentry is going to be useful in that TLM does also have two observer wards on him as well. If he's able to get behind, might be looking to place a ward up here to give himself some vision behind this tower for any potential blood seekers. You know, pop into a, the rupture behind the tree line on and, somebody. And uh, that's why Epa right on top of it, putting down a preemptive sentry for that uh, for that high ground ward. I think Fresh was just pinging the uber ward spot there. And Weaver does have his BKB. Where'd you go? There he is. Muffin Man finishing his BKB. Quite uh, quite formidable. It's going to be quite a big difference here. I mean, he's not going to be able to take most of the damage from a lot of these big spells, but one of the always disadvantages to picking Weaver, or not picking Weaver, but picking the Black King bar as the item on the Weaver is, if you take a lot of damage, I mean, Weaver is undeniably one of the squishiest heroes, and the counter to that is definitely going to be the time lapse. But if you BKB and you time lapse, you waste the BKB charge. So if you don't get the full charge out of it, it's kind of always a waste, which is why the Lincolns is the recommended item, because it can carry over even if you decide to do something like a time lapse. But I mean, if we take the example of taking a lot of damage from T Monk here, it's not going to matter. They're going to jump right into this team fight right away, jumping in on T Monk. Uh, OD Alt is going to go down. It's not really going to matter. The boat comes in, not able to catch very many heroes here right away the darkshear jumps behind the enemy lines unfortunately he's going to be silenced up and darkshear wall goes down preventing any intervention here on the side ground z muffin man popping the ages and the bkb unfortunately 2-0 in the background you're trying to find a kill on two duck you might be able to find a z muffin man caught on the other side of this wall here the sentry ward is going is down they might be able to find a kill Unfortunately, in the background, OD is brought down behind that dark so while Z Muffin Man just trying to trying to escape here, pick up a kill on Z on TT Fresh here. Bloodseeker does buy back to get back right into this fight, throws the silence out on TLM. Konka as well, throwing down the torrent back on the Bloodseeker. They are just continuing this fight. TP coming in on TT Monk, looking to pick up a kill here on TLM. Fight Carapace is popped, he's not going to take all that much damage. Unfortunately, Fresh is going to take a lot of damage from the Sentry War sitting right here. He is going to go down to the Tidebringer, and no hero on Easy Life is going to pay with their life here. Three down as well. Three down, three heroes down from SYF right now, and none down for Easy Life, unfortunately. We did see the buyback from, I think it was Chen who bought back here. Konka, now finished the Shadow Blade, going to be putting out that much more damage during these team fights. Not that he's putting out enough already at this point. <laughs> He's, he's certainly no slouch when it comes to that, and very, very nice sentry ward play all throughout that battle. Um, I, I believe this sentry in the middle of the lane at the moment was just used to de-ward a sentry that just got thrown down right at the start. So both teams wanting to make sure that they have the monopoly on true side in these battles, and uh, easy life just managing to leverage the most out of that at the moment. It, uh, it is it is worth saying that uh, that BKB on the Weaver, uh, he did have to hold position under the tower for a while there because it didn't save him from the eruption, but it does completely shut down the outwall to Pharaoh. OD goes down once again to uh, the combined efforts of Yeah Buddy and the Nyx Assassin here who are able to find the kill. Nyx Assassin, the greedy rich Nyx picking up, picking himself a blink dagger. Not all that surprising here. Initiation goes down on Yeah Buddy, not going to be able to find it. He's just trying to survive here. Come on, Yeah Buddy. Give him some sympathy. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, Gyro just doesn't have the items to contribute as much as I'm sure he would like to right now. I mean, he doesn't even have drums, nor a BKB. He's gonna take. He's taking way too much damage from a lot of these spells. He's finding himself torrented more than once during these team fights, and it's really, really holding him out here, especially with the next. The next assassin is landing quite a bit of abilities oh, here. Bo comes in on Booma. Booma oh, yeah, is gonna go down. Monk drops the call out, looking for a kill on Yeah Buddy. Yeah Buddy is pretty tanky though. He's gonna be able to take a lot of this damage here. Two man stun yeah, going out here. God. 2-0, getting sent back in a few seconds here. One more right-click as well, and he'll go down. He is just able to find the escape here. Darks here trying to dive past, and he might pay with his life here. Rubik telekinesis him up behind the tower, takes a silence. He is going to go down. The OD ult goes off. Unfortunately, still not able to find a kill here on Yeah Buddy. TLM turns on Vendetta, looking for a kill. Has enough mana for the stun, and they might be able to bring him down here. And 
TLM, where are you getting the mana for these abilities? Because that was just... I, I saw you with 100 mana and suddenly you had enough for your whole chain. OD, losing his, losing his mind right now, dies twice in the span of one minute to the same hero. That was just monstrous. TLM is uh, is really showing us what a Nyx assassin can do against an Outworld destroyer when he doesn't get shut down. With his Blink Meanwhile, Dagger as well. TT Fresh over on the Rubik, still with brown boots, only just managed to buy a magic wand. I mean, most of the heroes on SYF are kind of starving. I mean, not, we don't really have that much farm to, to mention. The only person who has any kind of semblance of farm is probably going to be the Outworld Destroyer, sitting with a Mithril Hammer and a Hand of Midas. I mean, if you want to call Hand of Midas a symbol of farm, then Bloodseeker and Outworld Destroyer are going to be the most farmed <laughs> heroes, but I wouldn't consider the Hand of Midas, you know, a symbol of farm. As Bloodseeker seems to be desperately trying to finish a mech here, looking for some kind of sustainability during teamfights because they really don't have any. I mean, Rubik is okay at sustainability, it's stealing some stuns and saving a bit of time, but other than that, there really isn't all that much. I mean, all they have is damage. And frankly, the longer this goes, they're going to have less and less of it, with Lonsdale already finishing his mech as well, Hand of God going to be up in 26 seconds, probably going to be looking to push into the, ba into the base at this point. I mean, they have the capabilities, Roshan is going to be back up in under 30 seconds here. They're probably they're gonna be able to take it uncontested, and then they'll probably just rotate in and push the, push down uh, one set of barracks. It is worth mentioning that TLM has just bought the gem of True Sight. Uh, the only invisibility here over on SYF is, of course, Rubik when he's stealing those spells. But being able to use the gem um, to absolutely control the board situation. Oh, those Hand of Midas is being leveraged nicely against the Chen cooldown, hitting Lonsdale. Ooh, that was uh. That was a bit ugly. That was a bit brutal, yeah. The whole team came up with the smoke and Lonsdale's like, oh, well, hello. And that was about the end of that right here. Uh, TLM throwing down the Impale over on Buma. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to hit that Torrent. Darkseer well goes down as well. 2-0, skitting around, looking for the kills here. Silvos is going to pick up double kill. TLM picks up the Dominating Streak as well. Yeah, buddy, just trying to survive your fantastic yeah, stolen Torrent. Get it, netting OD with a triple kill here. Roshan is up, but SYF have decided not to respond with taking the Roshan because the buyback comes frack from Kunkka and they're not going to be able to do much here. Meanwhile, Weaver being annoying, trying to knock down this tier 3 tower. Monk trying to do just anything to stop him here and it's not going to be all that much. Does have his ultimate orb, going to be probably looking to build his Lincoln Sphere at this point, which is going to be the pushing point, I think, for Weaver's survivability. It's going to be unbelievably annoying to kill him once he picks up that Lincoln Sphere. Fortunately, he's probably not going to have that much damage. I mean, he's probably going to be hitting for around 150 once he has that uh, Lincoln Sphere, which is not all that bad. Either way, Viking Bar is finished up on Outworld Destroyer. He's going to be running around now. That Midas is finally starting to pay off for SYF here. Appears to be mutually exclusive to Outworld Destroyer. Bloodseeker is still a st very starving for gold here, not able to finish anything at this point. 1400 gold, might be able to finish the mech as I mentioned yeah. earlier. I, I, honestly, at this point, I would probably sell the Quelling Blade and, and grab the Headdress, or sell the Stat Shield and grab the Headdress, because um, like, every little bit helps, you know? And um, it must be said, those Hands of Midas's, I hadn't actually considered. They're coming in kind of handy against Lonsdale in team fights when they have the Hands of Midas ready to go. Like, it's, it's a really quick way to get rid of, you know, a 1400 HP Centaur that Chen's picked up. Oh, exactly. SYF, smoking up right now, probably looking for a kill here on the Weaver of the Darkseer. If they can find the Astral Imprisoned here, Darkseer finding himself coming to farm this heavy camp here. He might go down, Telekinesis goes up, Silence right away as well. Nyx Assassin blinking in, trying to make something of this fight here. In instead, he's finding himself in a bad position here. Boat goes out, only hitting 2-0, unfortunately. Buma getting one-shotted by Kunkka here in the background. Right away, SYF has to turn around and run here as, yeah, Buddy goes on just a rampage here, trying to find these kills. Nick Sasson in the background picks up a kill on 2-0 two, 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 Bloodseeker here. Silvos might be brought down unfortunately here. The boat is stolen. It might land here on Z Muffin Land. It definitely lands on Yeah Buddy here and right away just a one for one trade being Argon is going to be the result of that is that conflict now. Lonsdale rotating back in here. Does, does he have he doesn't have the Hand of God. Oddly, though, he does have a Blink Dagger on Chen. I'm not sure what that gets him. I mean, it's not like he can give oh, his... Oh, yeah, let's him Blink in to get the mech off. That's... it's next level. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> let's him Blink in to get position for the mech. I guess as well allows him to <laughs> probably get in and send a hero back if he really needs to in a bad position there, but... 
It's not really an. It's not. Really, it's a surprising pickup. Might have been a better choice to build something like the Aghanim Scepter at this point. I mean, two thousand one hundred would have put him halfway to the Ag, sitting at twelve hundred now. Would have been almost done the ice at this point. Weaver unfortunately pops the Black King bar to survive a little bit through this. Uh, it's rupture. BKB TP is pop sends him all the way back to the fountain. Get finding get able to escape that fight almost completely unscathed. And he has finished his Lincoln Sphere. You were right, hitting for 160 damage. So now, now is probably the point at which he wants to start considering building damage items. And it's kind of interesting that Weaver and Kunka are much the same. They just like like they just want straight damage. Attack speed isn't really as big a deal. With those two heroes, Roshan going down here to our to just a gaggle of Chen creeps, T Duck, TLM. Yeah, buddy's run in. Wants to smack him around with that sword. Roshan probably gonna go down here very soon. Once the Aegis is picked up, I mean they're gonna have all the components necessary to push into the base, give or take a pipe, which can be substituted with extra healing from the Chen. But I mean they have the mech, they got yeah, the we, hand of God yeah, very we, short. We, we got the pipe up on T Duck. Do we have the pipe up on T Duck? We do. We do have the pipe up on T Duck. I mean that's definitely gonna be the as discussed by, I'm sure people know Cinderin. Cinderin is the one who came up with, you know, the Triforce that you need to push a base. You come up with the pipe, the mech, uh, the Aegis. It's your insurance policies on pushing the base. And I mean, Easy Life have all three, which could make it quite easy. But unfortunately, you know, Rubik has been really on point with these steals. I mean, he's made oh, Kunkka's yeah, life as tough as possible. All five enemy heroes quickly reapplying that Shadow Blade. I don't think they noticed him. Unfortunately, SYF is stuck in the middle here. Bo Wall catching two heroes here. Two of the most important heroes. T Silo's taking a lot of damage here from Yeah, buddy. T Duck is going to pick up the double kill here with that wall. Gyro is forced to buy back with what money he still has. I mean, yeah, their positioning was nice on finding Yeah, buddy, but they didn't come with any detection to initiate on, initiate on him right away, and they got surrounded, and the boat wall was a fantastic combination from T-Duck, and unfortunately, OD and Leshrac are still going to be down for this duration here, and the only defense they're going to be able to put up, call down, is going to come down here, the pipe is going to absorb most of the damage, the Muffin Man as well is relatively tanky at this point, with a lot of regen here, TLM blinks in, trying to pick up a couple of SVF. Yeah. Lincoln's Pox allowing TLM to blink up and just shove an impale right down his throat, Hand of God comes out, we've got a... Uh... We've got this Wild Wing Ripper just face tanking the tower. They don't even have a creep wave, but who cares? And Chen is his own creep wave. I don't know what you've been playing. Chen is definitely his own creep wave here. More initiation comes out. Vacuum goes out as well. T-Monk gonna find himself brought down once again. Buyback made absolutely moot here. 2-0. Just trying to escape here at this point. Yeah, buddy. Taking quite a bit of damage, although he does have the Aegis and enough money for his Daedalus at this point. I don't think he really cares if he goes down. Another kill is found here by the Nyx Assassin. Able to find the kill here on Leshrac, unfortunately. Silvos just trying to salvage this somehow as well. Has the ult, throws it down the yeah, buddy, but he doesn't have enough intelligence to make anything of it here. BKB oh, is no. popped on Silvos, pops the Aegis as well on Kunkka here. Not gonna matter, he's gonna go down as well here. Z Muffin Man finding the kill. And right away, Easy Life turns back around to beating up these barracks, considering that's what they've been wanting to do the entire time. Yeah, yeah, buddy, just uh, what wandering around, smacking the buildings and the creeps. It's like, yeah, you, you, you other plebeians, in, not in the one position, can probably handle that, Rax. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, with enough money to finish his Daedalus here. 1,000 is all he's going to need. Mech is finally finished on this Bloodseeker. I mean, that must feel like yes. one one big accomplishment for him. I mean, he's been trying to build it since about 15 minutes here. I'd feel pretty good about myself at this point. Oh, yeah, no, it's the comeback time now, I believe. Oh, I mean, there is the potential. I really hate the dis <laughs> dis discounting teams. I mean, there is the potential that SYF could turn this around if they're able to find enough pickoffs. Pick -offs. I mean... Like the one they were able to find here on the Darkseer as well, but apparently Easy Life like to have the Easy Life Team Blink Dagger because four of five heroes on this lineup all possess Blink Daggers now. Three yeah, of five, sorry. Kind, kind of Team Blink Dagger over here. Uh, and it is worth mentioning that Rubik has managed to finish his four staff, so that's that's quite nice. We're, we're getting some key items coming out. We've got an Astral Imprisonment from our Silver Skull. Ooh, T-Duck blinking up with the Iron Shell. TLM blink up with the Impale. Cooldown comes down, but the boat is going to catch 2-0. Silvos is BKB bashing on TLM, but it's not going to make a bit of difference. Throws the Imprisonment, not going to let him get away. Fresh running away with the Shikuchi. It looks like Monk is going to get caught out here. No, nope, they're going to make it back to the Fountain. Unfortunately, I mean, they can't respond too much to this. I mean, there's just so much healing and so much persistency from Easy Life's lineup right now. I mean, they have a lot of reliable stuns. T-Duck has been absolutely on point on all of these vacuums. He's finding perfect vacuums. And the coordination between T-Duck 
And this Nyx Assassin is absolutely astounding. I mean, more than once we've seen vacuum into multiple man impales, which has been absolutely astounding to see. The timing on those abilities is incredibly difficult to pull off, and he's been able to pull it off almost seamlessly. TLM sent back to the base here by Chen. He'll be back quite shortly here, but second set of racks is going to go down here for SYF, and two heroes are still down. They're not going to be able to respond to this too much. They can't be losing too much more here. Booma getting sent up here. Torrent might be able to find a cleave here on Fresh. Oh, yep, ZZ Muffin picking up that kill on Fresh. Meanwhile, Lonsdale sorting out Boomer. Boat goes in here on Monk. Monk stunned up inside the fountain here. It's going to have a hard time leaving the fountain after one person pops, pops the Lincoln Sphere here. Not going to do all that much. Yeah, buddy, without mana here, just trying to get out of this situation. They've taken barracks. They don't want to be losing too much here and make it not worth it. Silvos. Deciding to maybe chase and changing his mind here. T-Duck starts to TP back to base here as most of the easy life lineup turns around and uh, heads back to base to heal up and head for a round two. Uh, and Lonsdale, it is worth mentioning, has 4.3 thousand gold in the kitty. So, he's, uh, you know, he can buy himself something nice with that. I think it's definitely going to be... Yeah, you can buy an Aegis, right? You can buy an Aegis and move for like uh, 10,000 gold. You can definitely <laughs> pick up an Aegis. since we've been playing? It's, it's patch 6.2 something, right? And we are going to see the Arganims up on Lonsdale. That, uh, that hand of God on the 30 second cooldown. Like, let's be honest, that's pornography. That's brilliant. It is. It is unbelievable. It is going to be so dirty to see the persistency that Easy Life already has combined with Lonsdale having 30 second healing as well as the mech on a 45 second cooldown. It is just going to be persistency on an unparalleled level here. And unfortunately, I don't think SYF is going to be able to react to it all that much. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, look at the, if you look at the net worth graph, I think it's pretty telling. Like, TLM, who's playing the five-roll Nyx Assassin, has more money than uh, Silvos on the uh, on the outworld of Vara, so it's pretty grim at this point. Well, I mean, the entire lineup of Easy Life sits, uh, sits on a towering throne above SYF right now. I mean... As you said, Nick Sasson, 6,900 a year, buddy, throwing out a cleave here on 2-0. 2-0, losing half of his health to, health to just one cleave here, unfortunately. There's not much that they can be doing here. I mean, they can do their best to contest this push here, but I think what we need to see here is a little bit more... I'm not too sure what we're, what we're trying to see here, honestly. I mean, I thought I, I came up with the starting out of 10 and was like, I'm not really sure what we need to see more of here. I mean, Easy Life is just playing so well here. I'm sure it'll come to me by the end. Brilliant silence on Teed Up by 2-0. All right, I've, I've got to throw that one out there. That silence prevented the vacuum and the wall from coming out. But it's not going to matter here. Team Monk BKB has popped on Z Muffin Man. Gyro's going to go down 51 seconds here. TLM is going to go down in the background to Silvos. Gem is going to be dropped here. Silvos just trying to find himself back inside this fountain here to get some protection. Muffin Man does have an MKB up at this point. Rubik trying to throw the telekinesis out on him. He's not going to be able to here. 2-0 deciding to man fight Weaver here. It might be a bad choice. He's taking a lot of right-click damage from everybody and their sister here. Fresh just trying to contribute as much as he can here. Yeah, buddy. Still wailing on this last set of barracks here. This might be this this might be the mega creeps here, unfortunately. Silvos just trying to drop the ultimate here. Booma coming back as well. Booma gonna go down here. LD as well going down for a full 63 seconds. Fresh just trying to find salvation in this fountain and the barracks are gonna go down and the GG well played is called from Team SYF right now. Well that was exciting. That was quite the impressive game from both teams. I mean Easy Life did a fantastic job at absolutely just adapting and overcoming the situation that was presented i mean they were given the tri lane in the top and they said no you know what we're gonna put our chen inside your jungle and we're gonna make a lot of it and you know what the chen is definitely what won this game i'm not afraid to say it. the chen is what won this game and it... those, those first what like five kills from the chen rotating from the bottom lane through the middle lane up to the top